Well, the last Premier League game of the season for Manchester United is on this Sunday and we're here to bring you what we call the match preview. Man United versus Fulham is the game that is going to be played at Old Trafford on Sunday at... <clears throat> 18.30 hours, that's when the game is going to be starting. And remember, all the games that close the Premier League season of 2022-2023 are going to be played at the same time. And you know how we do it here? Match day live, match reaction is all going to be happening in here for you. Welcome to this channel, United Matters channel. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Rock and David is my name. Hope you guys are really having a wonderful evening right <laughs> let's get into this now <clears throat> we've already qualified for the champions league having beaten chelsea yesterday night by four goals to one we are really having 72 points now <clears throat> what's the importance of this game one eric ten Hag wants to maintain his unbeaten record he has gone 28 games unbeaten at old trafford and i think he would like to end the season when old trafford is really the fortress it has been ever since we lost to Brighton in the league and Rio Sociedad into the Rio Sociedad into the UEFA Europa League. That's what Eric Ten Hag really wants. Secondly, Ten Hag would like to finish third, not fourth. He's a man who always goes in, goes in for the best available and you would expect him to really want his team to go all out and obviously win this beautiful game at Old Trafford against Fulham. Fulham is one of the teams we're going to hate to beat very many times this season. We're going to hate to play them away <coughs> in the Premier League and we beat them by two goals to one. Alejandro Ganacho coming in through to score <coughs> a late winner off the bench. Remember that day, that's when Cristiano Ronaldo led his interview out with Piers Morgan and it came out went viral and that marked the end of Cristiano Ronaldo at Manchester United then then we beat them into the quarterfinals of the FA Cup it was three it was three goals to one but remember they first scored a header through Mitrovic then Bruno equalized through a penalty Sabitza gave us gave us the lead then Bruno scored a third goal in there for you. But in that game, it saw Mitrovic sent off. Uh, William sent off after denying Sancho by using his hand to get the ball off the goal line that was going to cross and really count. That would have been the equalizer. Then even Marco Silva found himself sent off the field of play and suspended. Mitrovic was banned for eight games. He has just returned and he might come in through to, to real revenge and say, I came in here, you gave me a lot of bad energy i was red carded suspended for eight games and here i come back to real revenge to you manchester united that is really highly anticipated according to me so they are going to come in here very charged to go on and do the needful to hurt manchester united but eric ten hag has always found a solution for every team that has gonna hate to come at live up at old trafford newcastle is having 70 points we are having 72 points if we win our game we are going to be having 75 points and even if they win their game against chelsea they'll be having 73 points and that means the third position would have gone ahead to get secured third position we finish in it means more money and and ten hag really going ahead to close in on his debut season at Manchester United. That is Eric Ted Hag for you. But <clears throat> we are having some injuries that I've gone ahead to add on the recent ones that we had. Remember Sabitza out until the end of the season. Donny van de Beek trying to come back, but I don't see any chance of him playing in the game tomorrow and the game of Man City. Then we are having Lisandro Martinez out. Tom Heaton is another one. Uh, now, We've gotten more two injuries. That is Luke Shaw and um, Luke Shaw and uh, Anthony. That's it. Anthony and Luke Shaw got injuries, but that of Luke Shaw never looked so serious. But that of a man <coughs> called Anthony is like a season, a season ending injury. Stories are indicating that he's going to spend two months out, meaning that he might not even catch up on the preseason. He might join us on the preseason when things have already started to go on. Because if you are counting two months from now, that means 26th of June. That is one month. And 26th of July, 
those are two months. That means would have gone ahead to play close to three or four games as Manchester United in the preseason when Anthony is just trying to recover and really get back to where he deserves to be. That is Anthony Santos for you. That means Ahmad Diallo is really a lucky person. He's really going to find himself into those games of Manchester United that most of us are really going to be watching here from America, Norway, and very many others. When you look at those games that Anthony is going to miss, mm, 12th July, we are playing Leeds. He's not going to be part of that game. United versus Lyon, he's not going to be part of that game. Arsenal versus Manchester United is not going to be part of that game. He must, he might return when we are playing Wrexham in America on the 26th of July. Then he'll take part in the remaining two games of Real Madrid versus Manchester United and Dortmund versus Manchester United. So Ten Hag is lining up close to eight fixtures that you're going to play before we really start the season. So that means Anthony is going to miss out on to close to three or four games that Ten Hag is going to have to prepare for us during the pre-season. Then. When you look at uh, West Ham, no, sorry, Fulham, they're having Andreas Pereira out, Tim Rim out, Kazawa out, Daniel James is expected to return. So that is how they are standing. But the rest of the players are really available to come in through and obviously do the needful for the team of... <coughs> for the team of Manchester United. So let's go into the predicted starting 11 of Manchester United as they... I expected to stand for Fulham before we get to Manchester United. We expect them to be having Bernard Leno, Tete, Adarbio, Diop, Robinson, Reid, Paulinia, Wilson, Kane, William, and Mitrovic. That is the starting 11 of Fulham that we expect them to go on and really load at Old Trafford as they sum up their last game of the season. But remember, United had played the previous two games. That summed up their pre that summed up their previous two seasons away from home. Last season we played against Crystal Palace and we lost by one goal to nil. The other season of 2021-2022 we played away at uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers and we won by two goals to one. I remember it was Anthony Elanga and uh, and one Mata taking a penalty after Don Van Bink was fouled. So <clears throat> this time round, we are privileged that the last game of the season is being played at Old Trafford and the players are really charged to really get us to where we're supposed to be. We want to finish third. Ten Hag has told them, though, we are having an FA Cup final around the corner. I believe Ten Hag is going to make some good changes, but I'm not going to be shocked if at all he goes ahead and names a lineup that is really unchanged because his players have close to one week to rest as they prepare for Man City on the 3rd of June, that is next weekend. Now, obviously, <clears throat> the starting 11, people have called in for Butland to start, but I think David De Gea is going to start in goal because Ten Hag takes this as a serious game. He takes this as a serious game. He wants to win. The system is 4-2-3-1 and David De Gea is going to be in goal. 17 clean sheets kept this season. If at all he finds to keep a clean sheet tomorrow, or sorry, on Sunday, would have gone ahead to keep what we call a third, sorry, an, an 18th clean sheet, matching his best ever clean sheet <coughs> keeping season at Manchester United. Right back, I think Aaron Bissaka is going to be rested this time round. We expect Dalo to come in through and obviously play into that position of the right back position. Tarel Malassia is expected to start onto the left back of Manchester United. He came on in the game of Fulham. Sorry, he came on. He came on in the game of Chelsea and played 45 minutes. The manager was preparing him for these minutes. However, much a team of however much. A team of Chelsea saw Luke Shaw really get injured, but the manager is really ready to bring in Tyrell Malassia to do the business and really get it done and dusted. When central defense, I think Harry Maguire is going to return. Obviously, there's the kind of games that Harry Maguire is supposed to play where we have nothing to lose. We only have to protect one thing. That is our home record of not being beaten. And if at all we win, 
we can find ourselves in a position of obviously doing the need. But remember the last time we played in the FA Cup at Old Trafford, you saw Mitrovic causing havoc to Harry Maguire and Harry Maguire got a stupid yellow card because of Mitrovic and that goal that Mitrovic scores it's because that Harry Maguire forget to do his job and obviously Mitrovic capitalized onto the space that was given to him and headed the ball into the back of the net. Lindarov is expected to start onto the left side of the central defense and they are going to play alongside Harry Maguire that is the Maglov. When we go to the midfield I expect lots of changes there especially in the double pivot we are welcoming back the Mark Fred, that is Scott McTominay and Fred into that midfield. I expect Ten Hag to do that because he would like to put Casemiro on the bench unless otherwise things don't go as he wants them to go. That's when he'll get on Casemiro on the field of play. And I think Casemiro will be really telling the manager, please, I want to play this game. I want to play this game. So get me on, but Ten Hag will tell him we have the most important game on the 3rd of June of stopping City from winning <coughs> the treble as that is going to be the second second last final for City to play as the finale is going to be played on 10th that is the UEFA Champions League against, against Inter Milan. <coughs> Sorry about that. One player I expect to really come on through and really start is Bruno Fernandes. He's not going to rest this man because he doesn't look like he's tired. He has gone ahead to play almost every game for Manchester United. But Ten Hag is going to really put him <clears throat> onto the field of play to get ready to lead United on the other side. That is Bruno Fernandes Bogues. <laughs> that is the main man there for you. And he's going to lead the team. <clears throat> Though Harry Maguire will be putting on the um, captain Amban. We know who the real captain of the team is. Now. On the right attacking side, I've seen people telling, I've seen people in the comment section calling in for Pelestri to come in through and very many others, but I think it's going to be Jordan Sancho. He cannot weaken himself to that level. It's going to be Jordan Sancho playing off the right attacking side of the midfield. Then Pelestri might come in later if at all the game calls for his services. On the left attacking side of the midfield, I believe Marcus Rashford is going to be rested. He'll come on again as he did last time and he's going to find himself in a position of really putting in Alejandro Ganacho onto the left attacking side of the midfield. Remember Ten Hag told Ganacho when he was really offering him a new contract that I want you to put into the starting 11 of United. This is the perfect opportunity to start Alejandro Ganacho because when you do start Alejandro Ganacho in this game and give him close to give him close to 60 70 minutes then Rashford comes in and plays some 20 minutes it's like it's like a recognition for him and getting him ready for the game of city because you never know what's going to happen in the game of city we might go 120 minutes we might go 90 minutes and the finales are always unpredicted so this is the game that we expect and have to give ganacho all those kinds of minutes for coming through and really play for the club of manchester united so after that who is leading the line i think it's going to be wild veg host to lead the line for Manchester United. But I won't be surprised if at all Casemiro is put in that team because he is the only central attacking midfielder I have in that team. That's it. He's the only central attack midfielder I have in that team. Now, Ten Hag might not want to cross the bridge before he reaches it. He might first want to win this game such that he builds a huge momentum ahead of the game of the FA Cup finale as he really goes ahead to play to play Fulham. Fulham is really a very tricky side and they're really having some good players and if I told you put Fred and Scott McTominay they might lose the midfield battle to Paulinia and, and uh, Eric Ten Hag might want to see to it that he really gets Casemiro into the mix and as I've always told you that for Casemiro <clears throat> he has gone ahead to rest some good number of games. Eight games non-playing so that means he has at least rested more than any player of United meaning that Ten Hag might really feel him in the field of play to come on and with the need for and remember the previous two games Casemiro has been really up and running and he scored a goal against Bournemouth the only one that gave us a lead and then in the game of Chelsea he scored the opener and that second assist you know the secondary assist to the goal of Antoine Martial that really closed the first half was really <clears throat> was really 
flawless. So that is the starting eleven for United, and we expect lots of things to come in through. But I think we are winning that game by two goals to nil. That's it. We are winning it by two. Oh, it's going to be Harry Maguire. Two one. That's it. <laughs> one. So we have some we have some facts coming in from the Google as far as the head to head game of United versus Fulham is concerned. We've been told that after losing back-to-back -back Premier League games against Fulham in March, December 2009, Manchester United are unbeaten in their last 14 games against the Cottages, meaning that we've won 11 and it drawn 3. Fulham have lost 18 of their last 21 away league games against Manchester United with their only win in the time coming in October 2003 under Chris Coleman. 3-1, however, the Cottages have come away with a draw in two of their last three Premier League visits to Old Trafford in the league. I remember one of those when they last played in the league at Old Trafford. Uh, it was Cavani who scored that goal. I think I just crossed the half line. David Deha released him and obviously looped the goalkeeper. And the game ended 1-1. So that's one of the draws I will remember. Manchester United have won all five of their Premier League game games against promoted sides this season. Last winning all six in a single campaign back in 2011-2012. Obviously, the promoted sides have been Nottingham. We beat them... <coughs> nil at the city ground and I think 3 nil at Old Trafford. Then Bournemouth, we beat them 3 nil at Old Trafford and 1 nil at the Vitality Stadium. When Fulham, we beat them 2 1 at their home, that is the Craven Cottage, and here they come at Old Trafford. And we're waiting to see what's going to happen there. Fulham have only won three of their 53 Premier League away games against the sides in the top four of the table, drawing 12 and losing 38. Those wins came at Manchester United in October 2003, Tottenham Hotspur, Leicester in November. So it shows you that they are not good when it comes to playing teams that are really in the top four. And lastly, and lastly, Manchester United have only lost their final Premier League game in one of their nine campaigns in which they've contested the FA Cup finale that season, going down 1-0 at home to West Ham 2006-2007. Now, that is everything that is concerned about that beautiful game of football. As I've told you, the prediction, 3-3, three, 2-1 three, is my prediction. 2-1 win for Manchester United. Then... One thing that you need to know about Fulham, the previous three games, we're not going to have to lose any game. They've really collected seven points. Won two and drawn one. That is it. Now, for Manchester United, we found ourselves in a position of really winning two and losing one. We lost to West Ham, won against Bournemouth, and here we come, beating... Um, Wolf, sorry, we've gone ahead to beat Wolves. We've gone ahead to beat Wolves in our previous games. I think we beat Wolves, we beat Bournemouth, and we beat Chelsea. Our previous three games have been really good, good wins, and we've won all of them, collecting maximum points. So, your thoughts on to the Manchester United versus Fulham match preview are welcome in the comment section below your prediction are welcome tell me your thoughts and what you think about the beautiful game of football that is closing down the premier league season of Manchester united as we prepare for the fa cup finale against man city guys i'm out thank you for watching through tell me where you're watching in from and continue to subscribe i cover you all in the precious blood of jesus christ my muslim friends juma karim ciao ciao